All right, this is a Barry Burton version two, gen two by WeTech. This is as it comes. Uses the same mag as the version one. Two piece plastic grips. This rail is interchangeable with the other Barry Burton. This compensator is as well, but keep in mind that it will go over your front sight. It raises the front sight and therefore requires a taller rear sight. So if you use this compensator, you need this rear sight for it to actually be accurate. Otherwise it'll be like tilty. So we're taking this gun apart today for a couple reasons. One, I'm gonna be setting it up for the next owner. Number two, I built this gun off of a parts bin from another boneyard gun from evike.com. That means that the gun that it came with has a blown out nozzle. It's still there, just most of it's gone. It's broken. So we're going to be replacing that. And as you will see here in a second, it doesn't go back because there is no guide rod. There's no guide rod, no guide rod spring. And to top it off, the trigger's dead. Where is it? Hold the trigger bar up, hold it with pressure and squeeze the trigger, and it releases the hammer. That is the trigger bar spring. It took off one day. So with that being said, I have parts. We have the assembly, which I don't think we'll need, but I needed the nozzle. This is a Gen 1 nozzle I will show you to compare. I have trigger bar springs, which apparently appear to be the same, so we will be using one of those. I have some lubricant. This you can get from car stores, car parts stores, such as O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Napa. I recommend this because it is silicone based. A lot of posts when I was trying to get into Airsoft were saying go to your local Walmart, buy some oil, but petroleum based oil is a no go. You don't want to use petroleum based oil on your magazines or your gun where any rubber parts may be because it will tear it apart. Coming from an automotive background, I knew this stuff is good because located in the brake assembly units, usually you find rubber. Ta-da! This is the stuff that Evike recommended, but this stuff is super thin. It just runs right out. With that being said, we got our tools, we got our parts. I will clip into earlier part of this video as to exactly what parts we need. Oh, see if there's any gas in here. No ammunition, no BBs. Trigger bar up. No gas. I'll be making a video on working on the magazines later. Step one, you can start with the grips, but I would recommend starting with the compensator. And I'll get to that in a moment as to why. Four millimeter. If you want to go standard, 530 seconds right here. So 530 seconds or a four and a millimeter. I'm gonna stick with metric. Bottom one is fake, that's for show. You only wanna do the top one. The top one releases the compensator. This This is relevant to both the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Barry Burtons. Remove this, put it in your cup, slides forward. 
if your barrel has an orange tip, this will not work. If it gets caught up in here, it will keep the slide from going into battery. Big parts over there. From here, do slide release, slide lock release. Push this in, slide this down, release, slide forward. Now, there's another reason why I wanted to do this. There's no magazine in it. Usually when it gets caught, it's due to a magazine being in there. You do not want your magazine in there when you're trying to move this forward. The slide will not come out. Everything here from this point forward is relevant to an M9 or an M9A1, WeTech Gen 2, arguably Gen 1 as well, but I don't want to get anyone confused here. However, the Gen 2 version 2 Barry Burton model has an interesting issue. This lower rail here has these, and I don't know what exactly they're for, aside from keeping the slide from going too far forward and I guess ripping your compensator off. Realistically, I guess I could understand that, but look how far forward the slide has to come first. This is where it's supposed to be when it's normal. So you got clearance, but it prevents you from moving it forward. So you have to push up this way to get it to clear. Continue doing that. It will get caught a couple places. You also need to keep an eye back here. Make sure you don't get this caught. And just kind of apply pressure as you go along this area, pushing up. And it will slide out. And there's your frame. Now, what holds the rail in? is these two small fill-up screws. You can use something like an eyeglass kit, screwdriver, or maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit stouter, because they do have some torque to them. I don't plan to remove these, I don't need to, but that's it, just two screws, there are no washers, they screw directly into the base. So in theory, you could add this to a 92FS frame from WeTech, by drilling the appropriate holes where you need them and the threads that the screws thread into thread directly into this. There's no threads in the frame. So if that's something you want to do, you could do a silver frame and you don't want to have to paint it and you already have a silver frame, you could do that. It is something I wanted to do. I may do it in the future, just life's been a little difficult lately. Anyways, next you have the slide. This is the part I was talking about. The nozzle here is, front half is gone. Usually there's a guide rod right here. I will show you the guide rod differences here in a moment. This is a Gen 2 guide rod. Remove this. And this is a Gen 1. I'm just showing you, just in case. These are not compatible with one another. If you're going to use a Gen 2, use a Gen 2 guide rod. The springs, from what I know of, are the same, but don't count me on that too hard just yet because I have not actually checked. But I'm pretty sure they're the same. This is the end you want to put in the slide. It's the thicker end. There's more... Come on, focus. Need to get a decent camera for this, for this stuff. You'll notice that one end has a couple coils and the other end, I'm going to bend this around, don't, I don't recommend this, but this end has more to it. This is the end you want against the slide. Place. It's a dead nozzle. We're going to put this over here. This is the inner barrel. 
This is a Gen 2 or and or ATV2. Pop-up wheel. You don't have to take it all apart. Inner barrel is in there. And to remove the inner barrel, slide this out, push this up. And as you're pushing it up, a little bit of finesse here. Notice that there's a locking channel on this side. This prevents it from going too far forward when it's in the airsoft gun. So pull this down, pull this down, and or up, depending on which way you're going, and it will clear, and it pulls out. This is your inner barrel with the hop-up. This is your outer barrel. These are pins. There is a spring inside. I'm not going to take these apart. But there's the spring. There's the pins. These are not compatible with Gen 1. This helps feed the BBs up into the barrel. In which part of that corresponds with the tip found on the nozzle. Gen 2 will have two of these. This gun currently only has one for some reason. Like I said, Boneyard. Parts shall be missing. Parts shall be missing. You want a 1.3 millimeter for this. Very small. 1.5 millimeter for Gen 1, 1 1.3 for Gen 2. As for a standard equivalent, I'm going to say you probably shouldn't, but yeah, that works. That's It's pushing it, but it works. What size do we have? 0 0.050. If you heard that right. 0 0.050. That's small. I would stick with 1.3 millimeter. Your slide into safe position. Let me use the long end here. These are not in very tight. You can use a little bit of blue thread locker, but very, very, very little. You don't want to over tighten these. You can strip the inside and the outside at the same time or drop it and lose it. Aha, it stayed. Never mind, I didn't drop it. I mean, I did, I dropped the tool, but I didn't drop the screw. All right, very little. There is a wrong way and a right way. I'll show that when I put it back together. From here, this piece will come out. Wiggle it. It slides out away from the slide that way. There, like I said, there will be two of them. This gun only had one. Grab my Allen off the floor before I lose it. Put that back up there. The click sound is a little plunger. See a shiny part in there? See that shiny part underneath the lever? That's a plunger. There's a spring behind it, and that's what applies the pressure. There's a groove, and it slides in and out of that groove back there, the plunger. That's what makes the clicking noise. In order to remove that, and this would slide in the upright position, you're going to want it to go up. However, it will not travel far enough out without removing that tiny little flathead screw. And that you can use, I would recommend a screwdriver smaller than this, but this is the smallest one I have. Something like an eyeglass kit screwdriver should work. And again, there's not a lot of pressure. There's not a lot of torque. You can easily strip these out. So just be slow, steady, and careful. I'm going to do this over the table so I don't lose it. Very small, very tiny. There it is. It is a flathead on one side. Now you're going to want to push that where that screw just came out. You're going to want to push that back into the slide. And that is part of this arm right here. See that piece right there? 
you're going to want to keep that in mind because you're going to need to push that back up after when you re reassemble this. So push that in. And you can also use the safety to help you by pushing the safety back down in the safe now. Hear that click? That's the plunger. All right, so now that that's been pushed out of the way, there's a better shot at it right there. You can now, and I would recommend, I like to cup it in my hand. Otherwise that plunger in the spring can shoot out. Push the safety up and out of position. And there it is. There's the plunger. Put that over here. And the spring sometimes doesn't always come out, but there's the spring. You don't want to lose that. I mean, if you do, it's just, this won't stay. See, now it's all willy-nilly. You can actually move it from the other side too. So it adds tension to this so that it doesn't move so much. And it does make that sound, but also, as you'll see here in a second, that groove is where that plunger rides in. So, in order to pull this out now, you need to pull the nozzle forward. The nozzle has a crescent shape in it. Or sorry, the nozzle has a hole in it. The safety has a crescent shape in it. So if you're trying to yank this out and it's not coming out, that's because you need to pull what's left of the plunger forward. Slide this up and out. Kind of wiggle back and forth a little bit. It will come out. There shouldn't be any resistance here, really. Well, a little bit, but not a lot. You notice how it has grooves in it. That's where the back of the plunger goes into. There's your safety assembly. From here is where it gets a little bit more fun. There are springs located in here you don't want to lose. And this assembly is separate from the slide. It's a little bit difficult to tell here because it's black. But this whole thing, including the fake firing pin back here, which by the way is a sprung piece of metal. There's no spring behind it. It's just the metal tension. This piece right here is separate from the slide and this piece carries down through this assembly here it's all one unit and in order to get to your rear sight you need to get that out so with the power of a flathead pry bar i mean screwdriver all right as i have the flathead between this surface here and this surface here I'm applying pressure. See what I mean about those two pieces? Now I've got a little bit of a gap there. I can place the screwdriver in back here and continue, just rock it a little bit. See that assembly coming out now? Nice and slow, slow and steady does it. You don't wanna break anything, you don't wanna stretch anything, and you don't wanna lose the springs inside of here. From here, there is a groove here. It's not much of a groove, but every little bit counts. You're just looking for ways to make this easier. You can apply up here. Also, now we've opened up. This is where the safety would have gone through. We can now put it in here. Again, apply a little bit of pressure. It goes all the way through. Doing good, making good progress here. I'm not using the nozzle to pull this out because this nozzle is broken, so there's an opening. But if you have a good nozzle, you don't want to use the nozzle to pry. So therefore, that's why I'm not using the nozzle to pry. I'm using all of these hard metal pieces that I'm not going to damage with the, ooh, there goes the screw. This is a little spring. Don't lose this guy. This is the spring that goes to the nozzle. So I'm putting this in here for now, and then I will show you where it comes out after. All right. It is out. And you can see by the cut in the nozzle that this had, somebody had attempted to disassemble this by yanking the safety out without moving the nozzle. So that gives you an idea of what happens to the nozzle. 
this nozzle, when you pull it forward, clears this. This is the little bar, the rocks back and forth, that your safety screw came out of. This little bar here, depending on the position of which it's in, it rocks around on that. This pushes against a series of levers and springs on the frame. And that's what's responsible for your safety. So if this part doesn't break, this part can wear down. So we're going to take this out so I don't lose it. A little bit of silicone oil back here is not a bad idea, but you don't have to overdo it. I say silicone oil, but you use silicone grease here. Nozzle just slides forward and slides out. This is the plunger. This is one assembly. This is as it is. You can pull this out, I believe, from here, but I wouldn't recommend it. When you buy these, this is how it comes, the whole thing. So we're actually going to be replacing this on this gun, but we will be doing that when we reassemble it. But to give you an idea, I bought this from KYA Airsoft, or KY Airsoft, sorry. And this is how it came. It actually appears that my fake trigger piece was missing, or fake firing pin. Hmm. That's unfortunate. The lighting really isn't very good here, but I was supposed to do this outside. There's the rest of that bar. So now with this out of the way, Put this in my parts bin. We've already been through this. Put that in my parts bin. We've been through that parts bin. This will be the new nozzle we'll be using. You will notice that this piece here this piece on Gen 1s is solid. On Gen 2s, this piece is removable. It is different colors for different models, so if you want a different color one, you could order another one of these. It just pops out. Carefully, don't lose this. The Gen 2 version 2 for the Barry Burton model is like a gray. Other models are black, and I've seen silver. Those two Phillips screws, again, very small. Notice how it's dovetail. Remove those screws. This slides out of place. This screwdriver is actually quite small and it still isn't quite small enough. I don't really want to strip those. I don't need to take them out. But that would be how you would do it. Also, if you notice, there's a gap right here. That is that piece. I'm guessing that's part of the Gen 2 version 2 because that is not on the Gen 1 or Gen 2 version 1. That must be unique to this site. Kind of want to take it off now to find out. This front site does not have an inside portion. So I'm hoping. That means that could be knocked out, probably from this side from the looks of it. And that's it for the slide. Quite the pain in the butt if you want to do your rear sight though. Put that over here. Now we're off to the frame.
You're going to want to be careful when removing your grip on the right hand side because that trigger bar spring sometimes is not always in there fully seated and when you remove that side of the grip that spring can come out and that is possibly how the last one for this gun was lost Again, Barry Burton version 2 has a two-piece plastic Hoag style grip. And these grips are interchangeable with other versions of WeTech Gen 1 and Gen 2. So we're going to want to peel it back from the top and then the bottom. Now, these plastic grips that go all the way around, they have pins here and sometimes a pin back here. So that's why I recommend pin, prying it from the top first. Gets you a little bit of a gap here. And then just gently pry it apart because you don't want to break the pins, you don't want to break the plastic, and you don't want to lose the trigger bar spring. Going back down here again, going down to the bottom, pulling this apart, getting some gap. At least you can't see my face, my tongue wasn't sticking out. All right, this is fighting me a little bit here, and I don't want to break it, but we have got quite a bit of grip and room. So I'm going to disconnect the other side, and it slides down away from the gun. So you don't have to take it apart. Again, careful for that trigger bar spring. I didn't have one in the gun, so you're going to want to be careful. Rides right up in here, goes there, holds this up, and that is what allows you to disengage the hammer. Drop that down is absolutely nothing. Now remember that safety? The safety piece rides against this and that pushes down. Now if you push this down, you push it down with one finger, it still works. This is the side where your safety actuates whether or not the gun fires. By pushing on this, this releases the second one. So if you push down on that one, yeah, that spring comes forward. Push that down, that one right there. In order to release this now, you need to push on the middle one. And that's it. Pops out. That's how the safety works. So pull this back. You'll notice that one will drop. Push this down. Disengages it. Trigger doesn't do anything. Push that in. There it is. This likes to come out very easy.
we can remove this. Gen 1 and Gen 2 is different. So for Gen 2, you can slide this forward, pull this up so that it clears back here, and pull it straight out. As you're pulling it straight out, that's the spring. That spring does feed down into a very small hole here. So you're going to want to pull it up and out. And notice how it has its little teeth there, little fang. That fang goes inside of a little hole. It's very dark in there. See a little shine? There's a little hole right there. And that goes down. And you'll see the spring stick out on top of that. That's the pin for the trigger. Spring, that little fang will come out above it. Put it on the parts bin. To remove this, push this in again, rotate it up, and notice, it's be a little bit hard to show this on camera, but pull it all the way up and notice how that clears, but it gets caught in the frame here. So pull it away from the frame as you're sliding it up. And now it's all the way up, grab a hold of it, pull it straight out. Put that in that parts box. Now you can release this. And by releasing this, there is a spring on the inside, which I think, nope, that was something else. Spring on the inside of this. Pull this straight up. There's a little divot, a little hole there, right there. That's the spring sits in that. You don't want to lose that spring either. Pull the spring straight out. Okay, trigger bar spring, or sorry, trigger bar spring's already gone. Trigger bar. Yeah, a little spring in there. A little tail right there. Get your small flathead. Grab a hold of that little tail right there. Pull it forward. Slide it forward and over. It should go to the left. So now, see it's not on that pillar anymore? And that will allow you to slide this straight out. Putting that in my big box. This Phillips right here, the big one, that holds your trigger assembly. So we're going to flip this around. You could use a larger Phillips on this one. There is going to be some torque behind it. Uh, this uh... Wow, this one's loose. I thought maybe it was the wrong size, but it's loose. Guess it's a good thing I'm taking this apart now. Just grab a little pause in there. Pull it out. And now this is held in by that pin. This is more or less exclusive to Gen 2. Gen 1 does not have that pin problem. Obviously, you can't push it from this side. You're going to want to push it from that side. And for that, I like to use Allen keys because I have a lot of them. Uh, let's see if I can find one small enough.
Short end first, fingers on the other side. Or you can lay the gun down on a flat surface. I don't recommend hammering this. All right, I did end up having to use a screwdriver for the Phillips end. I don't recommend doing that. Last one I did was much easier, but you'll notice there is a groove that keeps this from rotating. Once you get past that groove, it just slides right out. Now, this whole assembly here will come right out. And the trigger, the trigger is now held in by a little piece of copper. And that copper has the spring around it. So if you wanna change out the trigger, you need to get a bigger And there's actually not a lot of pressure behind this. You can use a little just flathead screwdriver or uh, an Allen key. And just, you gotta find, figure a way to push it through against the spring. See, there's that tail that was holding on the trigger bar. So let's try a three millimeter. Three millimeter seems promising. Maybe it wants to go this way. There we go. Now as you push that through, the Allen key will go through. And this is what the trigger rides on. Now the spring is on your Allen key now. So pull that. And there goes the trigger and the trigger spring. So if you want to change this out for a silver one or if you want to paint it. And that's it for this piece. Trigger bar spring. Or sorry, trigger spring. My goodness. And that's the tail end. You want that end up when you put it back in. All right. Now for this part. This assembly is held in by that. Now, there's two ways you can go about this. You can start at the bottom and you start at the top. Starting at the top, there's less pressure. Starting at the bottom, I remember a little easier right now. Basically, there's a pin right there. And that pin, you wanna push on the smaller side. Now I said this side's a little bit smaller. You wanna double check how it's been put in. Sometimes they put it in left, sometimes they put it in right. But you want the smaller end to push because you don't wanna push the bigger end through the holes, especially if it has to go through something in the middle. This is a plunger. On the Samurai Edge models, this is flat, as well as some special models. On the standard model in the M9A1, there's usually a lanyard loop here. And you can swap it out, swap those pieces in and out. The Gen 1 will fit in here, and the Gen 2 will fit, and vice versa. There's a little bit of wiggle, but I was able to put a Gen 2 plunger in a Gen 1 frame. This part can come free. This is basically a big pin. See that right there? You can push that through. In some cases, like this one, you can even pull it out by hand. This pin is what the hammer rides on. So by pulling this out, wiggle, 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 and clear.
Get a little piece of copper in there again. Now, the reason why I mention this is that there's a spring in here, and that's what pushes this to go back up. The spring in here is what adds the tension to the hammer. Without that spring, the hammer would just flip and flop. Now, there is another pin right here. That's the small end, and that's the big end. It's not necessarily the frame, it's the, just the pin itself. So you'll notice there's more shadow on one end. It's like the best way I can put it, but it has a shadow. So, I think I might actually need that 1.3 millimeter here. Let's grab the 1.3 millimeter again. We're gonna use that to push on this. I'm going to grab my little Phillips here. Assuming I didn't put that somewhere. If you have a tool that's dedicated to pushing stuff out like pins, I would recommend that for doing something like this kind of work. Okay, broke it loose. Now I can grab this and push it through the rest of the way. Now notice what I mean about that. When you push the small end first, the big end tends to have a groove in it and will make it much more difficult and sometimes they just don't want to come out anyways. See that groove? If I could get it to focus. So you want them to always push on what looks like the smaller end. It's not necessarily the side of the gun. It's the side of the pin. And this goes for magazines too. One end has a groove. That's the bigger. This is the smaller end. The groove is the bigger end. In there. All right, now I'm going to release this. I'm going to pull this out, and this is going to want to come up. That spring is being relieved, and this assembly comes up. Ooh, and there's your hammer right there. And that keeps the spring from blowing out. See the groove in there? God, this light is terrible. Let me get that light on that moment here. So, hammer, hammer down. I believe this is the part that hits the back of the magazine. That screw right there releases this part. Be careful you don't lose that spring. This part wants to come out right now. The notch in the back of that goes into that groove right there. It holds that spring in place. Plunger time. Again, I'm going to grab a tool to push it out. Look for the smaller end, which is on this side of the gun currently. Keep a thumb or a finger down against the plunger so it doesn't try to shoot out on you.
All right, so this pin does not have a double side. Found it easier to push on the other side, but it's probably a case by case basis there. This side looks smaller, but pushed out easier from the other side. And now this is the plunger. It has the spring also has a wider end and a skinnier end. You want the skinnier end to go up into the gun, the wider end at the bottom. Here, aside from these right here, which I really don't want to do, they're super easy. I just, when you take this off, the rail likes to come loose. So you add a little bit of blue Loctite on the end of those. That is it. That is a bare frame. Everything taken out. Parts. These are all the little pieces. Time for reassembly. I'm going to start with the plunger. I'm going to try to tilt it in first. And find a larger pin. Again, there does appear to be a thinner end. It only seems to want to go through one side of the slide. And keep in mind, this is WeTech, so probably are some differences in machining. We wanted to go in easier from the left side. I'm going to use the back side of a screwdriver, push it in. Push it in flat. Probably use an Allen key. Just make sure it's flat and flush. Flat and flush on both sides. Gonna put this back in. Hammer assembly. Make sure it's lined up with that spring in there. Before I get too carried away with this, let me put this piece back in. Notch goes in. 
Head goes forward like it's looking forward out of the gun. Oh, gonna lose PC. My recommendation to make this easier on yourself, don't pull the hammer back because right now I'm fighting the tension of the hammer through the spring. Kind of dumb, but you know. I'm pushing this back through. Big one's nice, it's super easy. Also, now I'm gonna put the small one in. See if I can find one in here. I believe it was this one. One end, one grooved. So I'm gonna put it back in the same way I took it out. I'm gonna put the smooth end in on the left hand side. Just pretend that's focused. I'm going to use the flat end handle end. Or maybe not. Make sure that's lined up all the way. It looks good. So I'm going to try. Flathead screwdriver, maybe? It's just fussy. <laughs> and it's got cat hair on it now. Now let's put the trigger assembly back in. We're going to want our trigger assembly, our trigger. And where is it? Trigger spring. I think that was it for that one. Oh, wait, no, we want the copper. Copper piece. And then we want the pin. All right. So let's start with. This is kind of going to be all one, all one go here. So we're going to want to put the trigger in. Give me a second here. This is the front. This triggers going to, aha. Forgot, I have to go in at an angle like as if you're in the process of firing it. You're going to want to put the copper in, but you got to keep in mind about this spring. So let's see how this looks. You're going to want that down. You're going to want that up. So this is the unit, but I'm going to show you how I got it all together. Notice how one end of the spring is flat. Let me get this out of the way here. One end of the spring is flat and one end is not. This end holds onto the trigger bar. So I'm going to grab the trigger bar real quick. It gives you an idea of how this all goes together. Copper piece goes through the frame, pin holds that to the copper, spring goes over the copper, this notch in the spring goes over the top of the trigger bar, and this goes inside of the trigger assembly adding tension like this. This is being pushed up by the trigger assembly. 
So how do we get that into the gum? Well, take this back out. Here is the assembly. This bottom hole is where we want this unit to go through and the top hole is where we want the top one to go through. Take push this back through so now my pin is here back there now I'm going to take this out take this out take this out unfortunately put this back in place Keep in mind, this part goes up, this part goes down. This is the trigger assembly. Big hole goes forward. Trigger is also forward. So I'm holding that down. We want to put this and this spring in first. So this one's going to have the tension. We want to put tension on that. This one's going to want to rotate, so we're going to push that in. And I already lost it. Try to hold that in place. Take it again. Put that in there. Push it up. Push that in there. Now I'm going to put this over the Allen key, push that in, I'm trying to get that copper through the spring right now, through the trigger. So I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to push down on the spring. There. All right. While I had it flat on the table, found that to be easier. I had it flat on the table, copper down, used the key. I could see the spring wasn't lining up, so I pushed the spring down into the trigger assembly, into the trigger itself through this trigger assembly as I was pushing down on the assembly here, and the copper slid right through. Put it in through the top, like so. Any of those holes will line up. Slide it in. Now, through the left-hand side, you want to put your pin in. Maybe a little wiggle around a little bit. Shouldn't go in too hard. We don't want to dislodge that copper. And now I'm going to use a pushing tool, make sure it's all lined up. I'm going to use my flat head again. Skinny side. Try to make sure it's all it's dislodged itself here a little bit. Rule of thumb, if it's not going in very easy, it might be misaligned ever so much. It doesn't take much. After all, that's how these are built. The Gen 1 had rather loose tolerances. The Gen 2 has some tighter tolerances. And overall, it makes it better. It's smoother. It's quieter. doesn't make so much noise. But you also have the tighter pins. There we go. Now I got it in. Push that in. All right. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. Take this 
So yes. Alright, see how you can see the table through that hole? Right there. That is the hole I was telling you about that goes up in through here. That'll be important for putting the slide release back in. But first we're going to do this. I just wanted to show you that while I had the opportunity. Now if you mix your springs up, like I did, because I'm dumb, One of these is skinnier and longer. The skinnier and longer one should go to the plunger that goes into the back of the slide. So I'm putting that off to the side. This is slightly shorter and slightly fatter. So I'm going to use this for my button. Spring goes in the front hole. Seat it in there. Should sit. Now this goes in. Make sure that spring seats into the bottom of the button. You should see it just poke through. Push it in. Shouldn't be too much resistance. I'm getting some resistance here though. Careful when you take this stuff apart, folks. Sometimes it's intended as the manufacturer made it. Definitely the correct spring. It's just gritty. I had this happen on a Gen 1 before, too. There's actually some metal shavings in. Oh, that might be why it's gritty. There's metal shavings in where that screw came out. Can't really see it on the camera. Anyways, now is a good opportunity to put this back in. Now remember, I want it facing up. Slide it down as you push it in. Slide it down. And it should lock your spring in place so you can put your slide back on. You can slide it up to test it if you want. In, tap it down. Voila. All right. Next, trigger bar. Yeah, let's do the trigger bar next. I'm gonna put the trigger bar over here. All right. This one's pretty straightforward. Except you're gonna notice. See that shiny thing? like a line that goes through there that is the spring and that's going to want to grab onto this so what I'm going to do the back end of this goes into that channel right there see there's a channel there's a groove that part right there hits the back of the magazine so you want this trigger bar in between that and the piece in the back. The piece in the back is the face of the hammer. I'll put that in there and make sure that this, now keep in mind my hammer's down so I got to pull my trigger back to line it up with the hole. So, so now I can actually hold that up. Engage my safety, and ta-da. However, this moves because I haven't locked that spring back into place yet. So I need to push this in all the way, and it's going to push against that spring. It's that shiny fella right there. So I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver, grab the tail end of that spring, and before we pulled it up and to the left, now we want to pull it up and to the right. So I'm going to hold this with my index finger on this side, grab this down here, pull it up, 
and to the left. And that's it. It grabs right there in that groove, which is nice. The Gen 1s don't have that groove. Gen 2s do. So now it actually holds a trigger bar in place. Gen 1s are kind of flimsy whimsy. Now you can apply the trigger bar spring, but I'm going to wait on that until I'm ready to put the grips on. And then I will show you how to do that. Okay. Next. Might as well do the slide release. Now, if you take the spring out, that's fine. I'm going to take the spring out just to show you. This is not compatible with Gen 1. Neither is the spring. The spring, you want to keep the fang down. Fang down, flat part goes against the bottom of the slide release. Right there. So bottom is flat there, hold that in, and this goes into the frame, into that hole that I was talking about, the one you could see through, right in there, a little hole. So put that in the hole, like that, can you see it's in the hole? So now put this through that hole right there. God, what happened to my lighting? Come on. There it goes. Okay. Pin through there. Put the spring in. Put that in while you're holding the spring with the other finger. And rock it. And lock it. That shouldn't move left or right, unlike Gen 1's. <coughs> Should have a groove right there. Holds it in place. And that's it. You will see the tip, the fang, comes out right there. So that's it for the slide release. However, I made a mistake. This right here, that other part of the spring, the one on top, Easy fix. All right, flat into the spring on top of that groove right there. Put that into the hole in the frame. Pin into the frame. There we go. Now it locks itself into place. You should see the little spring on top. Now we have the mag release. Now I'm going to see if you can make this ambidextrous. Because I've seen it done on the Gen 1. Yes, you can make it ambidextrous. You can actually swap the slide, the mag, mag release. So that's cool, that's good to know. Now, I don't like doing that because I have to hold it in there. This piece, in order to get it out, you push on the back side of it. In order to get it back in, Put the release in first. So I'm going to put it in the correct way. Assuming you're not a lefty. So we're going to want to put it in. Put the thumb release side in first. Like so. And then put the back side into the groove. Like that. Don't try doing the back side first. It's, it's too big. It's not designed to come through. That's what stops it. So put the thumb side in first. And you can do it. Apparently these are ambidextrous, so you can swap these if you want to. All right. 
trigger bar spring, I guess now. Because we're brave. So this, you're going to want to turn this way. So the long side that's curved goes into a groove. Yeah, there's a groove right there. Starts here and goes down. You don't want that to ride in the groove, but I recommend putting it here first. See how there's a groove? Put that in there. This sits on top of that. And then while that's sitting on top of that, this goes down. You see why these fly off now. Tension, tension, slide it in while you're holding that. And that now is under tension. So instead of having to hold this, your finger here so it doesn't shoot off, Ta-da! Ugh! Son of a cat. And the spring took off already. I found it! Oh my goodness, I found it. These things tend to uh, disappear. Can't believe I found it. So don't mess with the gun too much with that. And you can also see now why they come loose while they're in the grip. So again, there's a groove, put it in the groove. Keep that above that and then slide that down into the bar like that. Count your lucky kittens. And we're going to apply this side first. Again, I'm sliding this on. Lining up the holes. Now it's time to put the screws in. Now these screws are, I believe, specific to Airsoft. You cannot use real steel screws in here. However, you can use real steel grips. Just use the Airsoft screws when you do so. There are some minor issues with some real steel grips. For example, you want to avoid Vertec from what I've been told. Also some wooden grips. The holes may be slightly off kilter. Gen 1 versus Gen 2. Gen 1 will only have one rib. Gen, uh, Gen 2 will have one rib. 
Gen 1 will have two ribs. This is what helps hold your spring. Put this back in. Remember this notch went down and this goes up to the safety like so. Make sure. That's the feeding piece that feeds the BBs in. So we're going to want to put this in like that. However, my nozzle is upside down. So don't do that. Nozzle goes this way. And the spring is going to go in here. Okay, it's terrible lighting. See that right there? That's the nozzle. And that channel, that groove right there, it's a little bit shiny. That right there is where the spring sits. Like that. This spring wants to ride on this plastic nub here. So we need to hold it there. Let's try putting the slide onto it instead while I'm holding this end. Remember, don't push on the nozzle. Before we go too far with that, we need to put this back in. It's not normally this difficult. There. All right, so while that's upside down and that's upside down, let's check on our spring. I believe our spring has fallen out of place. Of course it has. I'm gonna go grab some tape. Assuming I can find some. Come on.
Isn't that it? Looks like you might have had it right the first time. Cat hair. All right, pulling the nozzle forward, reinsert the safety. My goodness, cat hair. Keep in mind, you're gonna to want to reinsert Your plunger. Plunger goes inside of the safety, not the frame. So, little spring, little plunger. This is going to be a terrible video. Like there's so much resistance. All right. Notice how I have that down below. And this is angled up so that it clears. There's a channel in the slide it's going to want to rotate in. So now as we push this down, we have to push the plunger back in. So I'm going to use my little screwdriver. And there it is. Now we got the plunger and the safety in position. We're going to try to push this back up by this part right here. Push it up. And it should line that up. And now you want to rotate the safety so that you can see where that little screw goes. Remember, that's the little flathead screw. Little flathead on it.
doesn't need to be super tight. 